Today's video is brought to you by The Ridge Wallet. Ridge.com slash PipNight. The Ridge is a quality, minimalistic front pocket product designed to upgrade from the old bulky wallet. The Ridge is slim, RFID blocking, holds up to 12 cards and room for cash. It also has over 30,000 five-star reviews. The Ridge wallet comes in a whole range of styles, including carbon fiber, forged carbon, titanium, and many other styles to suit your needs. Ridge also offers other great accessories like phone cases, bags, mobile charging, knives, and a lot of other great quality products. Take advantage of the free shipping so you can get it fast, free returns if you don't like it, and it comes with a lifetime guarantee. Get 10% off today with free worldwide shipping and returns by going to ridge.com slash pibnight. That's right, ridge.com slash pibnight and use code pibnight, link in the description. Thanks Ridge for the channel sponsor and to all those who have purchased their products. What's up, you for today's video with the full explosion team. Now, five years ago, I did an explosion team and I thought, well, I actually might revamp this because now we've got Misty Explosion in there and it gave me a good opportunity to give this one another roll of dice. Uh, if people want to check me out on Twitch, make sure you do twitch.tv slash pipnoyt. That's where I do all my live streams, my Pokemon theme teams, my live Pokemon sweeps, all that sort of stuff. So drop me a follow there if you haven't already. I almost stream every single day. Uh, we've got three battles today, really spoiling you people with content. And I did some battles on live stream and to ones outside too so a mix of really cool battles so we got a battle against chartlin today and we got a toxapex lead now this snorlax strategy was all based around exploding right but i did actually have some interesting kind of strategies not just going like explosion and that's like that's the end of the strategy i did have some interesting ones so we got a uh, a blocking snorlax here then. what i'm going to be doing right is i'm going to be blocking that toxapex in so it cannot actually swap out it's going to be setting up a layer of toxic spikes now, a couple of lads of Tox Spikes aren't really going to worry me too much because this team isn't really going to be on the field for a huge amount of time. Usually, I'll implement my strategy uh, and then just go boom. Or some of them might just go boom straight away, depending on, you know, the situation. So, Tox Specs is going to go for a second Tox Spikes. That's uh, got two of them up now. It's at max layers. Now, what Snorlax is going to be doing is going for a Screech. Now, unfortunately for me, right, the Screech is going to miss. And uh, I've actually got to go for it again, which is really unfortunate. Now, the EVs on this Snorlax set were as follows. Max Elf and Max Attack, Adam and Nature, and the item was Chester Berry too. So going for a Screech here, it finally lands on the Toxpex. That's going to drop its defense by two. So obviously, I've blocked it in right now. It can't swap out, and it's got negative two of defense. So I'm going to try and get as many Screechs off against Toxpex as I can, and then I can land a Self Destruct. Now, I was a little bit worried because Toxpex can sometimes run protect and baneful bunker so i had to be very uh i had to be very cautious when i was actually going to go for a self-destruct now i do get a couple of people ask me uh what's the difference between self-destruct and explosion right i'll tell you why that is. so self-destruct is 200 base power and explosion is 250 base power they're both normal type moves explosions just better now why would you use explosion like why would you use self-destruct over explosion well snorlax actually doesn't get explosion but it does get self-destruct so i sort of did like a mix of pokemon who could learn those moves and some that couldn't right anyway so back to the battle here uh, toxpex is gonna burn me with the scold unfortunately but it doesn't know that i've got rest and even if it obviously suspected that I had rest. There's nothing you can do about it. I've actually blocked it in. So it's going to be going for just a continual barrage of Skulls against my Snorlax, and Snorlax is now going to go to sleep. Now, Toxpex runs very, very bulky, right? Always, always max health. Uh, most of the time, max health, max defense. That's usually what I see. That. So I thought I may as well get as many Screeches up as possible, right? Um, in case I'm burned as well before I use self destruct that's another worry. So I definitely want to have like negative six on the Toxpex's defense before I go for a self destruct right? So we got another Skull here, and I was thinking, I was waiting for the burn. It did not happen. And now Snorlax is going to go for the self destruct, and there is no way Toxpex, there's nowhere for Toxpex to hide. It is going to go down in one shot. So that was really good, and there was no way it was living that attack. So it's a clean uh, KO at the moment, a double KO. Now you're probably wondering, how are you going to win the game? by just using exploding moves. Well, you got to keep watching, right? So the next Pokemon is the Rhyperior, right? I'm going to be swapping in Waylord. Now, this Pokemon team was actually slightly different to a couple of battles um, I had in this video. So I'd use a different slight team here. So this Waylord set is a Soak Self-Destruct set with Curse and Rest. And I've also got Chesterberry on this one as well. Now, the problem about this one was like, 
Well, Rhyperia is not going to be bad, but they did actually swap out, probably expecting a Water-type move, so I was kind of lucky there because I really had nothing to do against that, so I just went for a curse. I was like, okay, Rhyperia is probably going to be like, you know, a physical attacker. I better get them cursed up as much as possible, then I might go for a self-destruct. Now, uh, Gengar's going to come in here, which is uh, pretty good because I've got Soak on this set. So what Soak is going to do, it's going to turn the opposing Pokemon into a water, uh, like a Water-type, right? Obviously, Ghost-types really counter this team hard, like Ghost and steel types like and rock types so another really bad one too so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be sending up a couple of curses as many as I can possibly set up uh, Gengar's going to go for a, a protect here so I was like oh no that worries me that it's got protect now I was like, I, I got to watch when I use self truck because if it uses Protect and I use self truck it's going to be absolute disaster, right? So I've got a plus two in attack and plus two in defense right now. So things are going fairly well. Um, I do have to use Soak against Gengar too to turn it into a water type. We'll add that water typing, uh, you know, to it. So I've got Self-Destruct, which is not going to work at the moment, and I've got Soak. I was actually half thinking about going for a rest here to get my full health back, but I thought, nah, I'm going to leave it for like one more turn. So Gengar is going to go for a nasty plot, which is going to be uh, very nasty. Now this uh, Waylord is actually built very bulky. It's max uh, attack and max special defense, just relying on it as just this gigantic health stat to sort of help me out there. So taking some more damage there from the Poison. I was thinking, man, I'm going to take a lot of damage from, like, a Shadow Ball here. Um, it was going to be very, very close where I was going to be able to live this one. And I went, okay, I'm going to go for rest there. Gengar's going to go for another Protect, obviously hoping I'll get some more Poison damage. And then he'll be able to take me out the Shadow Ball, whatever move is going for. I was assuming Shadow Ball or a Poison-type move. And uh, now my Lord is going to go sleep, so that's really good there. They try to take advantage of the Poison, and I took advantage of them using Protect, right? Now I'm pretty confident they're not going to go for Protect this turn. They're definitely going to attack me, so I thought, okay. It's time to go for self-destruct. I've got plus two in attack. And Gengar isn't the most bulkiest Pokemon in the world. The only thing I was, was worrying about, if it did have a Focus Sash, that was another thing too. Um, any Pokemon was sturdy. Those sort of things were a big counter to this team as well. So instead of going for a G-Max Gengar, it's going to be a normal Gengar. It's like, okay, normal Gengar. I was actually, I, I was honest. I was going to uh, expect like a G-Max Gengar there. So Gengar's going to be um, a really big ghost here. Now, even with it being Dynamax, I was confident Self-Struct should be able to take it out here. It was depending on what its item's going to be. So it's going to throw a gun boot, a kettle, and all that sort of, and the kitchen sink at me. And uh, now it's going to drop my uh, defense. Not that that really matters at all. I'm going to be going for a Self-Destruct. Now it's obviously got that water type uh, to it. I'm going to be able to get the self Self-destruct off, and Gengar is going to get hoop her like really, really hard there, and it's going to go down in one shot. So that was so good. I took the Dynamax Gengar out with the Wailod, so it's like a double self-destruct KO there, which is brilliant. That was my uh, self-destruct Pog 1 for this team. So we've taken uh, two Pokemon out of piece. I mean, I've taken myself out, but you know, that's 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 what the team team's all about, right? So Rhyperia is going to swap in here, and I'm going to be going into Mew. So it's like, okay, what Pokemon? When I was making this, I was like, what Pokemon gets Explosion? and gets Misty Explosion at the same time. It's like, Mew does. So on this set, we've got Explosion, Misty Explosion, Sword Dance, and Nasty Plot. I've got Max Attack and Max Special Attack, right? So I want to make use of uh, having... Uh, Mew's fairly bulky already. It's got decent speed already, so I thought I might as well make like a, a just a pure mix attacker, right, using these moves. So go for the Nasty Plot here on the Rhyperia. Rhyperia is going to go for a Stealth Rock. So now they've got Stealth Rock, and they've got two layers of Toxic Spikes on the field, which is, uh, you know, going to be doing a fair bit of incoming damage for me, right? So I've got to make sure I make these attacks count. So I thought, will Misty Explosion take out Rhyperia? I'm like, man, I don't think it's going to take it out because at the moment, it's only 100 base power. Now, if there was a Misty Terrain on the field, it would be 150 base power, right? So I was a little bit worried it wouldn't take it out because it can actually build on this special defensive side. So I took the risk and went for another uh, Nasty Plot. I was hoping it didn't have, like, Mega Horn. It's going to be going for an earthquake, and obviously, since I don't have a lot of um, a lot of bulk into my Mew, I do take a pretty heavy hit from the earthquake there. I'm thinking this ripe here, judging on the damage it did to me, is definitely running in bulk. So it definitely was a good idea to go for another nasty block. So I've got plus four in special attack now. I can go for a misty explosion here, and that is going to be doing some really big damage at plus four. So 100 base power at plus four. So go for that big old pink explosion, and Rhyperia is going to go down like a sack of stones. And this is really, really good, right? Because I've taken out half the team, and 
and I've taken it half my O team. So it's a very even battle at the moment. The problem is, right, I've got to get that W, you know what I mean? I've got to get those dubs. So I've got to be able to maybe Dynamax and then use, you know, either my explosion in Dynamax or Misty Explosion in Dynamax. That was my, that was sort of like my goal here at the moment. So Hydreigon's going to come in. I've got an overwhelming advantage against it. Like, I could go for a Misty Explosion now, but I thought, no. What I'm going to do is I'm going to probably go for a Dynamax here, and then I can go for a Dynamax Max Star Bomb. That way I won't actually KO myself, and I'll be able to get, you know, a couple of attacks off uh, without taking myself out. I may even be able to get, like, two Pokemon down, or even just getting one would be a very, very big advantage, uh, you know, for the Sylveon here. So I've got Misty Explosion, Misty Terrain, Wish, and Protect. I built this one up as Max Health and Max Special Attack Modest Nature, right? Now, I was thinking about this for a long time, right? Just judging on the Pokemon that they had left, I was a little bit worried about one Pokemon. That's why I took so long thinking up that move, right? You'll be able to see as the battle goes on. So go for the Dynamax Sylveon here. Now, they've already Dynamaxed their Gengar already. So I was like, okay, that's fine. I know they're definitely not going to be able to live this one. Unless they got a, a Sash or something weird like that. But I was definitely sure they wouldn't be running a, a Sash on Hydreigon. Like, then again, you never know, people. It's, it's Pimp Much YouTube channel, so anything can happen. So we're going to be going for a Max Starfall here. And we got the... Uh, Oh, there was a little cut there. The uh, High Dragon actually went for a Snarl. God, I really missed the verse of the crawl. That never would have happened if I had that. So I went for Snarl. It did obviously drop my special attack and it had some life orb damage. And then I took it out with a crit. The crit didn't even matter at all because, you know, it's four times super effective. Man, I, I really miss the versus recorder. Like, having to individually chop this battle every time I choose a move, swap my Pokemon, those sort of things, it's an absolute nightmare. Please, the next DLC, please give me back the versus recorder. Like, I beg of you. Okay, anyway, Hydra goes down. Obviously, that was going to already go down. It was four times uh, super effective. So the next Pokemon is Tokius. I was like, okay, well, Tokius is kind of bulky, right? I don't think Max Starfall will take it out. It's probably going to take the rest of this to actually get around that. And now it's going to go for a substitute. I'm like, no! That's the worst thing that could happen because it's going to outspeed Sylvia, right? Of course, I'm going to be able to attack it, but... It's going to burn up all the rest of my advantage with Dynamax, and it's going to force me to use Misty Explosion when I get outside of it, which is really bad. So it can easily go for another substitute here and just storm me out uh, with a Toxic, obviously, uh, using my move. By this stage, I think they realize what sort of team I'm running. Like, I've gone boom, what, four times now? Well, they don't really know I'm going for Explosion, but we'll miss the Explosion on this set. But I think they're guessing, you know, after me taking the first three Pokemon out with the, you know, exploding move. They'll probably guess what I'm doing. So now we got the Tokyo is going for another substitute. It's going to have the Citrus Berry as the item there, healing more of itself up. I was I was very confident I could take this thing out with a Misty Explosion if there was no substitute there. But the problem was it could just keep throwing that substitute up and, you know, blocking my attacks right. I needed a Pokemon to be able to outspeed that. And at the present moment of time, Sylvan was not outspeeding Tokus. I needed, like... I needed like a quick claw or something like that. So Sylveon is going to go out of its Dynamax there. It still did a very good job. At this stage, my main role here was to expose the Togekiss so it couldn't have a substitute up at all, right? So I went for the Misty Explosion, and I was hoping they'd go for an attacking route, but they went for another substitute. Like, man, that really sucks. So the Togekiss is going to have the substitute up. I'm going to go for a Misty Explosion. At least I'm going to break the substitute, but man, I lost my Dynamax advantage as soon as that Togekiss used substitute. I guess um, I guess I can be quite thankful that they didn't send Togekiss out when I Dynamax. That would have been disastrous. Like, I would have burned up all my Dynamax. So down goes my Silver and Still did an amazing job there, and I've got two Pokemon left. So Silvalli is my most speediest Pokemon on this team and my hardest hitter at the same time. It's got Explosion, it's got Sword Dance, and it's got the normal gem sub -G, and it's also got Self-Destruct too. I just thought it'd be interesting to give it both of the attacks, but most of the time, I'll be going for Explosion, right? So I was like, no games here. I'm just going to go for Explosion right off the bat. I've got Max Speed and Max Attack I've got on this one, Adam and Nature with the normal gem to boost up the power of Explosion. So this thing is going to be hitting really hard and Tokus is not going to be flying anymore. I mean, Tokus is never going to be flying again into this life, right? So we got one more Pokemon left and this was so, so funny. Like, this was, this was the funniest part like, like out of this whole battle. Watch this, right? So my last Pokemon is a Choice Band and Licky Licky, right? So I can only go for Explosion, Max Health, Max Attack. The last Pokemon was Ditto. I was like, they're going to have to go for Explosion, right? And like they, they're forced to, right? Because that's my only move. So we got two Licky Lickers on the field, right? And I'm thinking, wait a second here. Whoever goes first is gonna actually, actually going to lose because you maybe even if you take the opposing Pokemon out, right, your Pokemon is going to faint first. So I'm like, well, 
uh, depending on what item the Ditto's got, or whoever outspeeds who is going to determine this match, they are going to outspeed me. I'm thinking... Usually, like, Ditto's got Choice Scarf, right? So I'm thinking there was just a Choice Scarf Ditto. They're going to go for the explosion. That's going to take my Licky Licky out. However, the Licky Licky went down first. So technically, I actually ended up winning the battle. That was so crazy. And to top it off, people, to top it off, watch this. I thought I got the battle without a baby bottle, but we got a baby bottle right at the end there. I think they were quite annoyed that they ended up losing the battle. The funny thing is, Ro, the win and lose screen still went through, so I still got on people. Let's get some, uh, let's get a like on the video for that. That deserves a like. That was a crazy video uh, there. Let's get on to the second battle, man. That was so funny. Like, I can't believe that. The Ditto Cop in the explosion and then being forced to blow itself up. Okay, so the next battle we have is against Millie, and Millie's got a Togetic. In this battle, I shall be using Cloyster instead of Waylord. So I sort of a mix up with this team, right? Now, Cloyster is going to be doing a uh, entry hazard set with Shell Smash, Explosion, Substitute, and Spikes. We've got in this one max speed and max attack. I ran Adam and Nature and relied on Shell Smash to get my speed boost and obviously my attack boost as well. So first we go for the uh, Substitute just in case it went for a, a scummy status move. And it's going to be going for a scummy move, but it's going to be Ancient Power. So, oh no, it's going to be going for a Serene. It's, it's, it's going to try and boost its stat to Ancient Power. If this thing is ever lighted, which I'm a thousand percent sure, I'm going to be in a world of pain. There's no way I'll be able to get a Shell Smash up now with standard Ancient Power. And, you know, it's just not going to happen. So I've got to swap out the Cloyster and maybe use it later on in the game. So we're going to go into the Snorlax. So you guys seen the Snorlax set earlier on, right? This is going to be a perfect opportunity for my Snorlax to not only block this Togetic in and actually take it up. So this Togetic's going to go for a Body Slam. Snorlax, like, that's the first time Snorlax has ever been flat in its life. And I'm going to get paralyzed, right? So, like, okay, that's kind of annoying. But it's all good, right? I've still got rest. I can easily heal off any status, right? So Togetic... It's just spamming uh, the uh, Ancient Power at the moment, hoping to get a boost. I'm firstly going to be blocking it in, in case it had any second thoughts about swapping out. You know what I'm saying? So now it's going to go for another Ancient Power. I know Ancient Power doesn't have a lot of PP either, so I was hoping that they don't get lucky. It's only got, depending on what their ability, if they got Serene Grace, it's a little bit more. But uh, if they don't have Serene Grace, it's only a 10% chance. So uh, we got the uh, another another Ancient Power on the Togetic, and it gets one right at the end, just before I was going to attack it. So... At the moment, it's got negative one of defense, right? I went for the self-disrupt. I was like, this should probably take it out, right? Depending on what they've got in EVs, right? If it's special defensive or not. And that was probably just enough to take out the Togetic there. And Snorlax is going to take Togetic with it. Wow, that was really close. That would have been very, very problematic if it managed to live right. Next Pokemon is the Cramorant. Best Pokemon in Gen 8, people. I'm sorry, guys. It's my favorite. And uh, closely followed by Stone Jenner. The next Pokemon is uh, Cramorant. And we got Cloyster. So, okay. Well, what am I going to do against this thing? This could be really nasty. I could try and get a Spikes off. I was really actually going through in my head what I should do. I was thinking, okay, I want to go for a substitute and just see what happens. Right. Cramorant is going to outspeed me and go for a Surf. I'm like, oh, no. This is going to do some pretty good damage. Cloyster just managed to deliver it there, and it's able to go off the sub sheet as well, which is really, really good. So they went for the surf to get the fish in their mouth. Now, I've got to sub up. My only option here is either to go for a shell smash or just to go for an explosion straight up. I really didn't want to risk anything there. Uh, it's going to go for a hurricane. It's going to break my sub sheet, and now Cloyster is going to go for an explosion here. Now, the item I've got on the Cloyster, I was thinking about running a white herb or you know, Silk Scarf, and that is enough to take out the Cramorant, and it takes out my Cloyster, and Cramorant actually faints with a little fish in its mouth, which is hilarious. Man, the fish actually got free, guys. You know, the Cramorant fainted, and the fish, like, the fish went free. Man. Okay, so the next Pokemon is the uh, Butterfree, and I've got my Licky Licky from earlier on. So once again, this Licky Licky set was the most basic set. There's Choice Bandit and Explosion, right? Licky Licky um, is the, I, guess, I think it's the most powerful, um, Explode. They are out of on normal types, right? So they've got the highest attack stat with explosion. So I'm going to be going for an explosion there. And Butterfree is going to keep going for the Quiver Dance here. Obviously, I can't do anything. I don't really want to swap out. And I was actually starting to get worried because this thing was just boosting up its special attack. You know, its speed, its special defense, everything gets me right. So I had to take this out with an explosion. That was my only option here. Now, since it set up so many Quiver Dances, I was actually starting to get worried that it might have a Focus Sash, right? Because... You know, I've seen a lot of people run the, uh, you know, Focus Sash, Quiver Dance, Butterfree set run. Now, going for the explosion on the Butterfree, I managed to wake up, which is really good. And Butterfree, it's not going to be free anymore. And that's going to take both of us out. So I've taken half their team out, and I've taken half my team out. Man, these battles are intense. I need a drink of water real quick. Mm. 
before my uh my voice explodes. Now the next Pokemon we got is Bravery here. So oh man, Bravery's gonna be a hard Pokemon. This thing hits like really, really hard. Am I gonna be able to take it out with one missed explosion or not? So I went for Protect to see if it's gonna go for the Brave Bird, right? I knew I could live Brave Bird, but it was gonna do a heap of damage. Instead, it's gonna go for a Heat Wave. So I'm like, okay, it's a special set, right? It's a special set. And then it uses Zen Headbutt, so it's actually a mixed Bravery set. And I was hoping I didn't get flinched there, and I went for the Misty Train, because I thought they were gonna go for Heat Wave again. Now, if they went for a Brave Bird, what I was gonna do is I was just gonna go for uh, Misty Explosion, because I thought, look, it's Stab. Coming off its special attack, right? 100 base power, and I'd say if Brave Bird did recall damage, that would have only helped me out as well, and it would have done a lot of recall, um, you know, to my Sylvie on there. So anyway, go for the Misty Explosion under the Misty Terrain. It's now 150 base power, and that is going to drop Bravery, and it's also going to drop my Sylvie on. So four Pokemon down each now. It's a very, very close game. The thing here is, people... I needed to break the cycle of an eye for a night, right? I had to go into, like, I had to go into Dynamax soon, right? I couldn't wait, like, for too much longer. So, uh, the Gyarados is going to come out here, and it's going to go for an Outrage, an Outraging Gyarados. It only does, like, two health to me, and I was actually kind of disappointed I didn't go for a Sword Dance there, but I couldn't risk it, right? If that started spamming Waterfall and flinched me, I could have been in a lot of trouble. So, go for the Explosion, and that is probably just enough to take out the Gyarados there, which is amazing. So, Gyarados and Mew are going to go down at the same time. So, I've got one more Pokemon left, people. And if you remember, we haven't had a Dynamax on either side of the field. So, my last Pokemon is the Sil Valley. Now, Sil Valley has got Explosion, right? I've got to go for Sword Dance. I've got no choice but to go for Sword Dance, right? So, getting that plus two up and attack there, which is really good. Corviknight is going to go for Iron Defense. I'm like, no. No, how could this happen to me? So it's got plus sword defense, and basically we're on par with each other. It's like, okay, I'm gonna go have to go for another sword dance again. And as soon as I seen Iron Defense, I knew, I knew deep down what move it was gonna have against me, and it's gonna go for a body press, and my Steel Valley is gonna get Shrek. There's nothing I could have done there. What I was gonna do is I was gonna Dynamax next turn and go for the critical hit, but uh, that way I got walled so hard there by the Corp right at the end, but a very, very good battle. Uh, thank you for the battle there, and let's get on to the third and final battle, man. I got walled so hard by Corviknight. I wish, like, out of all the Pokemon, right, I really, I probably, I needed to be able to maybe change its type or something like that. The body press was awful, though. Okay, so the next battle we're against uh, Queen Tama, one, two, three. Uh, she got a Charizard lead here. So Charizard um, is going to really be difficult against my closest. So I think I was wondering, okay, Charizard will outspeed me. What I'll do, right, is I'll go for a Shell Smash. Then I can go for an Explosion and take the Charizard in one shot, right? So I went for Shell Smash, and I outsped the Charizard. I was like, what? I outsped the Charizard? No way. So I, I was really expecting to outspeed it. So then I wouldn't be facing a Charizard, you know, with a negative and special attack, right? Which is not going to be good. Now Charizard is going to be going for a, uh, I nearly said Fire Blast there, a Flamethrower, and it one shots me. That was a really bad start there. Um, I would have been better off just going for Explosion, right? But I didn't know. I thought Charizard would outspeed me. Anyway, next Pokemon is uh, the Steel Valley. So I thought, okay, well, I could go for an Explosion here. I know Explosion will take Charizard. I could actually go for a Sword Dance too, because I know that I can outspeed it, obviously, because I outsped it. But then I'm starting to think, yeah, I've got 150 base power on this Steel Valley. Why don't I make use of its Dynamax and try and get myself back into the game? So there was no way I could actually win this battle, or any battle, if I was always behind in the battle, right? Because if it was just an eye for an eye every single time, I had to make sure it was a draw up to the point where I Dynamax, and then I have to sort of like take the lead from there. I have to take at least one or two Pokemon out. So we got the Charizard actually swapping out here, and we got the Surfetch coming into my Sil Valley. So I went for a Max Strike. Coming off Explosion, it's 150 base power, and I've also got the normal gem as well. So this is going to be doing a heap of damage. There is no way that Surfetch is going to be able to live this one. I'm actually kind of, I'm actually kind of lucky that it, uh, you know, it did come in there because that could have been really bad. Like. If you notice, a lot of this team was actually weak to fighting type moves too. So down goes the Surf Fetch. I've got a couple of turns left with my Sil Valley too, which is good. Now, I've evened the battle up. It's an eye for an eye at the moment, so that's good. But what I need to... I have to be able to take one more Pokemon out before my Sil Valley goes down, right? I have to be able to do that. So the next Pokemon is the Kingdra. So Kingdra's kind of bulky. It's like, okay, well, Max Strike... Max Strike's not going to take it up, but it will do a pretty good like chunk of damage. I'm estimating about a two-hit KO um, if they do Dynamax. And, of course, the Kingdra is going to Dynamax. That's going to make 
You know, that's going to make matters really, really worse. Now, if it does go for a Dragon-type move, it is going to drop my attack. That could be really bad, too. Um, that'll make it a definite... Like, Kingdra will definitely be outlived then. And then I'll be forced to go for an explosion afterwards, which is probably not going to be ideal. Now, we've got a big old, uh, a big old purple seahorse. Oh, and we go for a max strike here. And it does some really impressive damage. I'm happy with that. So, it's a clear 2 year KO. Now, it's to see what Kingdra is actually going to do, too. I actually get a speed drop, which is nice, too. And instead of going for a drag type move, it's going to go for a max geyser. Trying to set that rain up on the field, too. Obviously, it's got probably it already has, like, swift swim, right? So, it does uh, like under half health to Sylvalli, Valley, which is really good. And now, it's going to start raining, right? So, it's like, okay. Well, I know that I can take this Pokemon out, right? If I go for max strike. Like right now, Kingdra is gone. That's really, really good. Unfortunately for me, they're going to swap their Kingdra. So I go, damn, that really sucks, right? I could have easily got another KO there. And they're going to swap Mewtwo. They've got a Mewtwo and they swap their shiny Mewtwo. It's like, okay, well, Mewtwo is very fast, so that's good. But man, I don't know if I can take Mewtwo. Like, I, I believe I was actually quite confident I could take the Mewtwo. I was like, that's not actually that bad. You know, that's actually a good swapping for me. But Mewtwo tanked it. It was like it was like a bulky Mewtwo. I was like, what the heck? What is this team, man? Like, I, I was actually starting to think they were running like bulky Pokemon, like bulky slow Charizard, like bulky, uh, like all these Pokemon, like really slow and bulky. I, I know it's hard to imagine on like a Mewtwo. So I had one more explosion left, and Mewtwo was on such a low amount of health. I thought, let's go for the disrespect self destruct. I managed to outspeed it there uh, because it obviously was a bulky Mewtwo, and Mewtwo is going to go down. Guys, bulky Mewtwo only on Pimp Nice channel. Actually, I had run a bulky Mewtwo myself once. Um, uh, I did it in Ubers, right? I did like a recover bulk up Mewtwo, like max health, max special defense. It actually was pretty good. It was pretty fun to use. So the next Pokemon is a Blossom. I've taken two Pokemon out, and I've lost two Pokemon. So we're fairly even at the moment, and they've also used up the Dynamax too. So Mew is my next uh, Pokemon here. I was like, okay, well, this thing's got better special defense than defense. So I could go for a Sword Dance and then an Explosion. That'll be really good. I knew that I could tank everything that this thing threw at me, unless it maybe status me and put me to sleep, or it just... Uh, you know, I may be unable to attack. That's about it. So it's going to be going for a status move, and it's going to be going for a poison powder. So poison powder is obviously going to kick up my uh, synchronize, and uh, that synchronize, and that's going to uh, poison the opposing blossoms. I was like, okay. Now the chat started saying you should stall out the blossom just with the poison and swap into the Snorlax and block it in. I was like, oh, it's tempted to do that. And I was like, oh, I don't know if I want to really do that, right? Um, I don't want to show my Snorlax just yet in case I really, really need it, right? And I can, you know, I can always take out another Pokemon later. So I went for an explosion here uh, with the Sword Dance on the Mew, right? After plus two and attack, it was hitting very, very hard. Now, Blossom is going to be going down to that one, which is good, and so is my Mew. So there's a Charizard left, right? There's a Kingdra. Kingdra's already taken a hit too, and there's one other Pokemon. So I've got three Pokemon each. So it's it's a draw at the moment, essentially. The problem is we've I've used my Dynamax up. So like, okay, well the best moment here is I could get a draw, or I might be able to do something. We'll see, we'll see what happens. Like it's just sort of judging on what they were gonna do. So out comes a Pikachu, a Pikachu or Pukachu, and man, you, like I'm looking at both these Pokemon. Right? Yeah, Pik Pikachu is like even more like dark, like saturated yellow, the Maliki Licky. So Pikachu's going to go for a nasty plot there. I was like, oh no, is this got Focus Sash instead of Light Bulb? So anyway, I had, no I had nothing to use there. I just had to use Explosion, and Pikachu is going to go down. I reckon, um, man, that would have done so much damage to Pikachu. I reckon that would have done like a thousand percent damage to Pikachu. It's got like paper, de like thin defenses, right? So Pikachu and Licky Licky are going to go down. We've got two more Pokemon apiece, and now in comes the Charizard. So it's like, okay, now, in this swap here, I actually went into the Sylveon, which is a bad matchup, right? Because Misty Explosion will not take out Charizard. And I had a feeling they were running bulk on, like, every one of their Pokemon. So I swapped down to my Sylveon and went to Snorlax. Snorlax had the ability Thick Fat, too. So if it went for a Fire-type move, you know, it wasn't going to do much damage at all. Now, maybe they predicted my swap there. They went for a Solar Beam. So it's not a Power Herb set. It's obviously not going to fire off right away. But that was a good play there if they did actually predict my Snorlax and Thick Fat swap in. Now, I've got Screech here, so I thought, well, one Screech, one self destruct that's easily going to be enough to take out Charizard, right? Even if they're running a bulky Charizard. So, Solar Beam, it's going to really do nothing to Snorlax at all. It's actually going to probably do around the, you know, around the damage that Flamethrower would have done. So, going for that Screech, it's going to drop the Charizard's defense by two stages. We get that nice harsh drop there, and now I could go for a, a block or a self destruct I was actually thinking, what if they swap out here? 
you know what? If they swap out, they swap out. Uh, something's going to go boom anyway. So Charizard is going to go for a flamethrower. Obviously trying to go for a burn there. I was, I was actually a little bit worried that I might get burned. But I didn't. And now Snorlax is going to get that self-destruct off on the Charizard. And Charizard is going to go down in one shot. So all that's left now is the Kingdra from earlier and the Sylveon. So like, okay, what can Kingdra do to my Sylveon to one shot? I mean, it's got like... I use a Kingdra with Dynamax and Smog, but like you can't Dynamax, so you know, Smog's gonna do nothing. And it's also got like Flash Cannon. Like, they were the only moves that could like hit me for super effective, unless it had some way of tanking my Mist Explosion, like living the Mist Explosion and then, uh, you know, somehow, you know, living that and uh, winning the battle. So now it's gonna go for a Flash Cannon there. Flash Cannon is not gonna take up my Sylveon. I'm glad I didn't set up the Misty Terrain because it actually dropped my special defense. I went for the Mist Explosion, and basically, what happens here, right? Even though we both had one Pokemon left, it's like the battle before, right? I took out the Kingdra first, but since I do the move Miss Explosion, I actually faint first, and the Kingdra goes down second. So technically, I lose, but it was a draw, that sort of thing. Anyway, hope you enjoyed all three of those battles. It was such an th old theme team and a good fun theme team to revamp, and I'll catch you guys tomorrow. Peace out.